Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend. Two clear trends I'm going to talk about this week. The trend towards less wet and less mild conditions for those parts of the UK that have been particularly wet and particularly mild. That doesn't cover everywhere, of course. It's been a variable month across the UK. But across England and Wales, as these red colours on this map show, it has been very mild. This is the temperature anomaly for January so far. The reds show where it's been two to three degrees warmer than the January average. And for Southern Scotland, Northern Ireland, also temperatures have been higher than average, only by a small amount, but for Northern Scotland, closer to average because, of course, we started January fairly cold here. It's also been much wetter than normal for some parts of the UK. Now, this shows the uh, rainfall so far this January, the first 10 days, compared with the month as a whole. So normally you'd expect 32% of the average at this point in the month, which would be these darker shades of brown that you can see across Northern Ireland, Northern and Eastern Scotland, as well as Eastern England. But we're closer to the lighter shades of brown and white for parts of Western England and Wales. That would indicate that for large parts of Wales, Northwest and Southwest England, we've been closer to average rainfall. So the whole month of January, just in the first 10 days. That's why the ground here is so saturated. That's why there are concerns about further rainfall over the next few days, because we're stuck in this weather pattern at the moment. The jet stream coming in, we're in a relatively flat position across the Atlantic and sending us further areas of low pressure, tightly packed isobars across the UK. And that continues to be the case as further lows deepen and get sent our way from the west. So it's going to stay blustery. It's going to be windy at times with strong gusts in the west in particular. And these lows will continue to send us outbreaks of rain, followed by showers, followed by further outbreaks of rain heading into the weekend. Now, you can see that flat jet stream still with us at the weekend, but looking further west, signs of a subtle change in the pattern the jet stream becoming a bit more amplified. This area of high pressure building a bit further out in the Atlantic. And uh, that subtle pattern change will have implications on our weather into next week. And I'll go into more of that in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at the rain that's coming our way. A series of weather fronts on Wednesday night affecting southern areas, the next weather front affecting the rest of the UK. Showers on Friday, followed by further persistent wet weather as more weather fronts come our way on Friday night and into Saturday. And with all that wet weather coming in, of course, there are concerns, particularly for those areas that have seen so much rain across Western England and Wales. So for Wednesday night's wet weather, it's mainly focused across South Wales and Southwest England. The wettest weather, 60 to 80 millimetres falling across the Bracken Beacons and across Exmoor. Now that will add uh, further concerns with the saturated ground and rising rivers. So there's a risk of flooding and uh, uh, very high levels of surface water as well. That's accompanied by a strong southwesterly wind reaching gale force around exposed coasts, 50 to 65 mile per hour gusts through the night. So certainly an unsettled night for southern and southwestern areas. Further north, it's less windy, it's less wet, still some showers about, but under clear skies for northern Scotland and with light winds, it's a cold night, minus three or minus four Celsius for some sheltered glens. A marked contrast further south where the strong wind and the wet weather will lead to a mild start to the day, 12 Celsius there in the southwest. Now, those outbreaks of rain in the south do tend to peel away through the morning, replaced by uh, blustery showers, but there'll be further showers and longer spells of rain affecting northern parts of the UK. It turns increasingly unsettled across Scotland, northern England and northern Ireland. In fact, as that wet weather arrives through the day, it will fall as snow above four or five hundred metres for Scotland, perhaps affecting some of the highest routes. And the wind will really ramp up later Thursday across parts of Northern Ireland, in particular risk of gales or even severe gales for exposed parts of Northern Ireland, this area of low pressure responsible. And that's going to send gales into Western Scotland as well as Irish sea coasts on Thursday night and into Friday. Friday, the winds do lessen as the low moves away, but it's a blustery day with further showers. Then the next area of persistent rain moves in on Friday night and into Saturday. Now the focus for that rain more likely to affect areas further north, so North Wales northwards, but still a very wet spell expected into the start of the weekend. Then it all starts to change. This low moves away and we pull in colder air from the north into Sunday and Monday. Accompanying that colder air, there'll be 
quite a lot of showers, but those showers are going to be falling into the colder air. So for some, a chance of snow. Not for Plymouth, you can see there is a downward trend in temperatures through the uh, uh, weekend and into the start of next week, back to around average for the time of year, but not cold enough for snow. Glasgow, meanwhile, it looks like will turn colder compared with uh, the present time both by day and by night, and it looks like it's going to be marginal for snow at Glas in Glasgow, but I could see some wintriness coming through in the showers for the start of next week. And certainly the showers will be falling as snow over the higher parts of Scotland, Northern England, Northern Ireland. These showers, however, they'll be coming in from the north. They'll be mainly affecting northern, western and eastern coasts, and there'll be some sunshine in between. So it looks like uh, certainly things are turning drier and colder for the start of next week, but nothing exceptionally cold for the time being. Temperatures in the south back to close to average, further north below average, and some of these showers, as I mentioned, falling as a mixture of rain, hail, sleet and snow, with uh, most of the snow accumulations, I suspect, over higher parts of northern UK. Then a ridge of high pressure arrives into that colder air on Monday night, so I expect a fairly widespread frost to wake up to on Tuesday, but look at what's waiting in the wings, another area of low pressure, a band of rain. This time it's coming in with a slightly different angle of attack and it's coming in and bumping into the cold air. However, at this point, significant differences in the various computer models emerge, whether that low will track across northern parts of the UK as per the Met Office model or in the latest European model it dives south. Either solution would lead to uh, some wet weather, some unsettled weather in places, but uh, the distribution of the rainfall varies and where we're likely to see snow varies as well. Suffice to say that on Tuesday, the greatest risk of snow will be across northern parts of the UK, perhaps central areas, mostly over the hills, but you wouldn't rule out snow for a time at lower levels. However, also wrapped up within this low, milder air, so I suspect it would be a transient risk of snow before milder air arrives. But it's only a thin slice of milder air with a return to colder conditions thereafter. And it looks likely that this pattern change I mentioned with this area of high pressure building and the jet stream becoming more amplified, well that's likely to lead to a significant difference in where we're going to see the wet and windy weather into next week. and temperatures as well. So this is how the jet stream looks for the start of next week. It's a bit more amplified and it's coming in at us from the northwest rather than from the west. Here it uh, compares with, um, I'm going to do a comparison with the present time. There's the jet stream on Monday of next week coming in from the northwest. There it is at the time of recording coming in from the west and at the moment it's oscillating between the southwest to the west. That's why it's relatively mild across England and Wales. That's why we're seeing much of our rainfall into western England as well as Wales. So this subtle change where it just backs a little bit into the start of next week means that our winds will start to come with a more of a northwesterly flavour. So colder weather coming in from the northwest or a return to average I should say. And rather than prolonged bouts of rain coming up from the west southwest, we're likely to see uh, rain and showers coming from the northwest, so likely feeding into uh, different areas, more focused towards the northwest rather than the southwest. And this is the most likely weather pattern throughout much of next week. This is a summary of all the different computer model runs that we do at the Met Office and also the uh, 50 or so computer model runs at uh, ECMWF, the European model and the American model. This summarises all the different computer model runs. This is the most likely weather pattern for next week. A generally northwesterly airflow, but I think it will come to, around to a westerly or northerly at times. And that would lead to temperatures a little below average or sometimes around average. It would lead to predominantly showery weather, but some uh, bands of rain coming through as well. And it would certainly be less wet and less mild compared with uh, January so far for those areas that have been so wet and so mild. So what happens after next week? Well, that's an interesting one to talk about because I mentioned in last week's 10-day trend that there are signs that the current distribution of rainfall across the West Pacific, this enhanced thundery activity that we're currently seeing, could 
affect our weather for the second half of January. And there are still signs of that happening. So what we tend to see with this oscillation in thundery activity across the Pacific, it's something called the Madden-Julian oscillation, is that it tends to affect the jet stream over the Pacific and then a week or two later that has implications for the jet stream over the Atlantic. And what it tends to do is it tends to make it more amplified and it uh, tends to lead to higher pressure closer to the UK. And this sums it up quite well. This again is a summary of all the different computer model runs and the most recent runs are shown on the top. What you're seeing here is a forecast for each day going forward for the next two weeks and each box is colored in red or blue or various shades in between. Now the closer to dark blue it is the more likely low pressure will be in charge of our weather and the closer to dark red it is the greater chance that higher pressure will be closer to the UK. And what we are indeed seeing is this change from blues to reds for around the 22nd, 23rd of January, so 11, 12 days time. And what's interesting to note as well is it's not just the most recent computer model runs, there's this consistent signal we've seen throughout the last few days and beyond. So this consistent signal for the third week of January to turn drier and perhaps a little colder as higher pressure starts to dominate. Now that higher pressure is coming up from the southwest by the looks of it. This is one of the more likely weather patterns for the week after next. Higher pressure towards the southwest and this northwest airflow. Note that there's still likely to be some unsettled weather, some rain or showers, especially in the north of the UK. So it's not going to turn entirely dry. But with that higher pressure, and this is another fairly likely weather pattern for the week after next, with that higher pressure coming up from the south, it looks like southern areas will dry out a bit more. So it's looking like there's this signal for higher pressure closer to the south of the UK for the week after next. And that would lead to something a little less wet and less mild. You wouldn't call it cold and dry, because I suspect we're only going to return to conditions close to average for a typical January rather than anything particularly colder or drier than average. But there is that signal nevertheless. If you are fed up with the rain, if you're living in Western England or Wales, that uh, certainly looks like uh, the signal for the time being. But of course, we'll keep you updated and you can follow the updates on social media. Bye bye.